السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ونعوذ بالله من النار وعذابها فيا إخوة الإسلام والإيمان السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أوصيكم ونفس الخاتع بتقوى الله جل وعلا وبطاعة الله وطاعة رسوله ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ويقول الرسول الحبيب صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه من قام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه أو كما قال الرسول الحبيب صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه بأبرولي سنسيسة الإسلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته 
for all praise, all credit, all thanks due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, our sustainer, our savior in the day of judgment. May Allah save us that day. I bear witness that there is no true God worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator. And I bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah is the last and the final messenger from Allah to mankind and to jinkind. Whoever chooses to obey Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and follow his teachings will be guided and he will attain success in this life and the hereafter. May Allah give us that success. Amen. Whoever chooses to disobey Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and disregard his teachings will be among the losers. He will go astray. Doesn't matter how intellect, how famous, how rich you are. You will be among the losers. May Allah protect us from that. Amen. In the Holy Quran, Allah advised the believers, the people who say we are believers. They already perform the rituals of Islam. They are Muslims. They have Iman. Allah advised them to have Taqwa. Many times, many, many times in the Quran about Taqwa, Allah mentioned it. More than what he mentioned about prayer. Now, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, we are witnessing the month of taqwa. Allah said, have taqwa as a believer. Look for taqwa, seek taqwa. Walk your way toward taqwa. Now you are in the month of taqwa. You just have to ask yourself three things. One, what do I want in Ramadan? As a Muslim, ask yourself, what do you want? Two, what Allah wants from you. Three, what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wants from you. Because if you don't know what you want, you cannot get it. We all know that. If you go to, to a market or to a shop or to a selling woman or anything, and you don't know what you want, you will just spend your time for nothing and come back. So as a Muslim, ask yourself what Allah wants from me in this month. Because it's a few days, a young ma'adudat. Few days it will be gone for another year. As a Muslim, if you know the value of Ramadan, you will work hard to attain it, to get it. But if you don't know the value, you consider it's just all. Oh, it's one of the mandatory or just Ramadan, let me fast, that's it. No. As a Muslim, you have to know, ask, study, what is the value of Ramadan? As a Muslim, as a believer. Because it's an opportunity for you to get closer to Allah. One. An opportunity for you to get Jannah. An opportunity for you to be saved from hell and fire. And an opportunity for you to be a true believer. Ramadan. You have to know the value. It's the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He chooses it. He is the one who creates whatever he wants and he chooses. We human beings, we are not equal. The prophets are not equal. The angels are not equal. Some are more better, more noble in Allah's sight than others. Now this month, Allah tells us it's his month. Now, if Allah tell you this is mine, personally, it's mine, I will give it to you, are you ready to get it? Because most of us, we fast Ramadan just as Ramadan. Oh, Ramadan came again, Alhamdulillah, fast it and finish it, gone. You have to prepare yourself. Because Allah, for him, he told us he want one thing from us, one single thing. For you to have taqwa at the end of your fasting. Every day, evaluate your fasting. Is my day today increase my taqwa or not? Is my iman is up or down? Because most of us, our days of Ramadan is like days of Shaaban and Rajab, are not equal. Allah tell us it's not equal. Don't make them equal. Because most of us, this still now, the same friends we have, the same days we spent, the same way we spent those days, till now is the same day. <coughs> Wake up in the morning, go sit where you used to sit, talk what you used to talk. Argue, talk bad words, say whatever you want. 
more you fasting. That shouldn't be like that. It should be different. Ramadan, everything, as a Muslim, should be different for you. Your days, your hours, your ways, the way you talk, the way you behave, the way you look, the way you talk. You do everything should be different in Ramadan. That is the fasting. Because Allah wants you to have taqwa at the end of your fast. Every day, your taqwa should go up a little bit. Now, did you check your taqwa in these four days or three days? Did you say, ask yourself, how is my day yesterday? Today, before yesterday, how my day was? Is it different from Shaban? Is it different from Rajab or not? Otherwise, you're not getting the value of your Ramadan. The Prophet Sallallahu what he wants from us? He wants us to modify our behavior. That's not. For you, when you behave in Ramadan, to be different. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wants. Allah wants taqwa. The Prophet wants your behavior to be changed. All your bad habits, put it aside. Change them. Try to get the good habit. Train yourself, your limbs, your mouth, your eyes, your food, your everything, change it to better. That's what the Prophet wanted. Now we'll come to the Dalils, inshallah. Now you, what do you want from Ramadan? Because the Prophet said, whoever fasts Ramadan with a pure, correct faith, having a correct Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and hoping the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, expecting it, wishing for it. The Prophet said, Allah will forgive you all your sins. It's your goal for Allah to give you your sins, then work to, uh, toward it. And the Prophet said, whoever fast a day for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will put you out far away from hellfire for 70 years. The distance of 70 years, you will be far from hellfire. Is that your goal, what you want? To be freed and emancipated from hellfire? Work toward that. Because most of us, Ramadan become a tradition. As a Muslim, don't let your worship of Allah be a tradition. It's not good for you. When you worship in Allah, make it for the sake of Allah, because you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because you want to follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because that's the only thing will give you the reward you want. Just fast in Ramadan because Ramadan? No. That's why the Prophet said, Imanan wahtisaban. Hoping the reward you will get it from Allah. Whatever Allah promise you, you will get it. Believe in that. Work toward that. Now ask yourself, how is your Ramadan? Because most of us, we fast Ramadan, we used to say what we used to say, till now we say it. We used to watch what we used to watch, till now we're watching it. We used to sit with the people we used to sit with, talk what we used to talk, argue about what we used to, till now we're doing it. That is wasting your Ramadan. Don't do that. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one day he was ascending, he's going up to his member. He said, I mean, second step, I mean, the third step, I mean. When he finishes, but he, went there, he went there and came down. After the prayer, the company says, Rasulullah, you did something today, we're not used to it. We hear you say three, I mean, when you're going up. He said, yes. The moment I start going to the member, up to the member, Jibreel came. He said, Muhammad, anyone of your ummah who witnessed Ramadan and he stayed with Ramadan until Ramadan end and finish, Allah didn't forgive him his sin. May Allah put him away from his rahmah, from his mercy. In another narration, he said that is the loser, that person is the loser, is the loser, is the doomed human being who witnessed Ramadan. Until Ramadan go, 
and he didn't, Allah didn't forgive him his sins. Now, when Jibreel make dua, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Ameen, that is 1,000 guarantee answered. The second one, he say, anyone of your ummah as a Muslim, if Allah give you long life, you witness your parents as seniors, as elders, they needed you and you didn't take care of them, you didn't help them. And you die, Allah put you in hellfire for that. May Allah put you away. May Allah put you away. You are doomed. The Prophet said, Ameen. And he said, the third person, anyone, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa your name is mentioned. And he didn't say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah put him away from his rahmah. Now, ask yourself, are you doing some things will will prevent you from getting the, the forgiveness of Allah? Because in the Islam, the Prophet tell us, there are some situations, if you put yourself in that situation, Allah will forgive you. His mercy encompasses everything. Everything he created, his mercy is more vast. But he has a situation. He, he says, if you, as a Muslim, have those situations, he won't forgive you your sins. The first one we know is shirk. As a Muslim, if you have anything which is a shirk, minor, hidden, big, Allah will accept your good deeds and he won't forgive your sins. We Muslims, we consider when we say shirk, someone who worship idol. No. Anyone, if you have anything with you at home, in your body, on your body, in your car, in your business, which someone give you for this protection, this for good luck, this for that and that. You as a Muslim, if you take in that in and you believe in it, you have a shirk. Now, we Muslim, most of us, we believe in that. Most of us have those things, which good people give us some papers, some ayat, we put it on our body or in our places for protection and for good luck. If you fast in Ramadan, you waste in your Ramadan. Go take everything out, trash it. If it's Quran, burn it for Allah to have mercy on you. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Tu'uradul A'malu kullu thnayni wa khamis. Tu'uradul A'mal, turfa'u A'malu ibad ila Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala fi kulli yawm thnayni wa khamis. Fayaghfiru Allahu li kulli abdin la yushrik billahi shay'a. إلا امرأ كانت بينه وبين أخيه شحناء فيقول أنذروا هذين حتى يصطلها أنذروا هذين حتى يصطلها وفي رواية أتركوا هذين حتى يصطلها أو كما قال الرسول الحبيب صلى الله عليه وسلم وصلى الله عليه The Prophet said if you fast Ramadan Allah will forgive your sins if you stand and pray at night Allah will forgive your sins that means we should Look forgiveness in this one. It's the month of forgiveness. Allah opened the doors wide open, 24 hours a day. Abu Abul Jannah Maftur. Allah's mercy and give forgiveness is coming down upon Muslims. You just have to do a little bit and you get what. But the Prophet Sallallahu said, all our deeds, every Monday and every Thursday, the angels will present it to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He knows everything about it. Well, it's their job to do it. Whatever they wrote, they will take it to Allah every Monday and every Thursday. The Prophet said, Allah will forgive you all your sins for the week if you don't have shirk. Because first condition, for Allah to look at your deed, accept the good one and forgive you the bad ones, you should not have shirk inside. One. The second thing he said, he will forgive everything except a person who have rancor, envy, hatred between him and his Muslim brother or Muslim sister. Allah will tell the angel, close his paper, put it aside until they met up. If they reconcile, they talk to one another, they ask forgiveness from one another, 
then I will forgive you. Now you see, you fast in Ramadan. Every day Allah forgive me. Allah forgive me. Every iftar you asking Allah forgive me. While you are the one who put in a barrier between you and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ask yourself, do you have any problem, any fight with your family members? With your own relatives? With your own brother and sister in the community? As a Muslim, for you to get the forgiveness of Allah, to, for you to get the benefit, the value of Ramadan, ask him or ask her forgiveness first. Because the Prophet said, if you fast and all you did went to Allah, if you have any problem in your heart for another human being, Muslim brother or sister, Allah will say, for this one, let them wait for these two. I won't forgive them until they made them. And the Prophet, he, was, he said, in a hadith of Sahih Muslim. Because most of us, we don't prepare for Ramadan. That's the sad part. Because we know here, if the Imam of Mecca send you a letter, I'm coming to visit you at your home. Or the president of any country you love could say, okay, I'm coming to visit you at your home. Do you say only, okay, I'll sit by that and let the kids make mess of the house? No. You will clean it and perfume it and paint it and tell everyone to behave and be good because you're getting a guest. Now we, we don't ready for Ramadan. Ramadan is a spiritual thing. It's not physical. We will get hungry, but the main thing is spiritual, our hearts. Did you clean your, clean your heart, brother? Did you? Just pick up the phone. Brother Ahmad, Sister Khadija, really we are fighting, we have problems between us. Ramadan is coming. Please forgive me. I'm asking you forgiveness. For me, I forgive you. For your own Ramadan, not for him, not for her, for you. Because the Prophet said, Allah will forgive you if you and your brother or sister have rancor between you in your heart. <coughs> so clear that. If you have any type of shirk, brother, make your iman pure. That's why the Prophet said, iman. If you fast Ramadan with a correct pure iman. If your iman is tainted, brothers, you're wasting your days. Don't do that. Because you don't have guarantee the next Ramadan you will be here. Only Allah knows that. So if Allah make you witness this Ramadan, do your best to get the proper value of Ramadan. That's why we fast here. For Allah to emancipate us. For Allah to free us from hellfire. And you won't be freed from hellfire if Allah didn't forgive you. May Allah forgive us our sins. But we have to work for it. That's why our Islam has problem today. We wishful thinking. We have wishful thinking with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to do whatever we want, then Allah has to give us whatever he promised the believers. You have to be a true believer. And a true believer has to clean his heart first. Heart. That's why Allah said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usuyamu kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la allakum tattakoon he didn't tell you about jannah he didn't tell you about hellfire he tell you only one thing he said i give you this ramadan i want only one thing from you your taqwa and the prophet tell us taqwa reside where you know a taqwa ha huna a taqwa ha huna a taqwa ha huna three times he said, you Muslims, you have to know what is taqwa. It's inside your heart. It resides inside. That means your heart has to be clean, brothers and sisters. <coughs> if you as a Muslim, you fast for 16 hours, well, you have the worst thinking about your Muslim brothers and sisters. You hate a Muslim brother or your sister to the point, for no reason you hate him. Now you fast him. And Allah wants you, when you end your fast, your taqwa to go up. How you will get taqwa in that black heart? In that hatred heart? In that heart you know you hate everything which is sunnah. You hate everything which is someone who follow in Islam. How you expect your Ramadan to be valued? Allah won't need it. Because he told you what you need. He said give me taqwa. I give you Ramadan, give me taqwa back. 
Ask yourself, what is your taqwa? How is the quality of your taqwa? It's not something you just say, I'm a Muslim. No, you have to have it in your heart. Between you and Allah, it's a private matter. That's why he gave us the sunnah, even the prophet gave us to stand at night and pray. If you cannot pray at the masjid because of work or something, don't deprive yourself. Pray at home. Get your ten rakas. Get your thirteen rakas. Don't say anything. Anywhere you act in Ramadan as a Muslim, even at work, you get your break. Try and stand and pray some raka'a between you and Allah. Make them as long as you can. Because the taqwa won't come by just saying it. You have to have it in your heart. And your heart has to be clean, brothers. Wallahi, if your heart is not clean, if your iman is not correct, and you don't have a hope that what you're doing is to please Allah with happiness, not a burden. Ramadan is not a burden. Don't count the days. Make your days count. That's Ramadan. Don't say I have three days today, we have four hours or twenty. No. Make your days count. Every day in your Ramadan, make it count. Ask yourself, how many Quran I read today? If I didn't read Quran, how many tasbih I made today? If I didn't get the chance to say something, how many astaghfirullah I made today? If I didn't make astaghfirullah, how many times I say Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa sallim today? It's not only one door to the Jannah. That's why the Prophet tells us to fattah abwaabul Jannah. Allah will open the, day, uh, the doors of Jannah. That means the doors of worship is open for you as a Muslim to get Jannah. If you cannot pray, you can read the Quran. If you cannot read the Quran, you can make tasbih and istighfar. You don't have to sit at work. Instead of talking to people about politics, about things, astaghfirullah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Make it your day because it's your Ramadan. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us clear point. لَيْسَ السُّيَامُ مِنَ الْأَكْلِ وَالشُّرْبِ إِنَّمَا السُّيَامُ مِنَ اللَّغْوِ وَالْرَثَفِ You believers, he said, let me tell you. Fasting is not only stopping eating and drinking. That is not the fasting I want, not the fasting I need, not the fasting Allah wants from you. If you want to be a true person who fasts, fast from any rubbish. Fast from any jokes, any mean, any foul, any bad language. Now ask yourself, your day, these three last three days, how many people you backbite while you're fasting? How many people you talk about them behind their back? Good or bad? What they don't like? How many gossips you say while you're fasting? How many foolish things you look at while you're fasting Ramadan? Because your prophet said fasting is not only because you don't eat, you don't drink. No. The real fasting is when you fast with your tongue, fast with your eyes, fast with your hands, fast with your feet, fast with your heart. That is the true fasting Allah needs from us and the prophet taught us to do. الحمد لله الذي بنعمته تتم الصالحات الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على النبي الأمي محمد وآله وأزواجه أمهات المؤمنين وذريته كما صليت وباركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد يا إخوة الإسلام والإيمان أكثروا من الصلاة والسلام على الحبيب المصطفى في هذا اليوم العظيم فإن الله وملائكته يصلون عليه ويقول الرسول الحبيب صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه إن من أفضل أيامكم يوم الجمعة فأكثروا فيه من الصلاة علي فإن صلاتكم معروضة علي ويقول أيضا من صلى علي صلاة واحدة صلى الله عليه بها أشرا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وآله Dear brothers and sisters in Islam We talked about the spiritual way of Ramadan Please, every day, look at your spiritual. We Muslims, our spiritual heart is very important. It's more important than the physical part. 
Fasting, we know all what is fasting. In the literal way, that means you don't eat, you don't drink, you don't be with a woman or your wife from morning before early morning, perch to sunset. We know that. And there's things which will destroy your fast. We all know that, alhamdulillah, the coming Jumas, they will tell you. There are five things voluntary. If you do them, you don't have a fast. You have to pay it back and you have to continue fasting that day. One, when you voluntarily eat or drink. We all know that. If you voluntarily eat and drink, you don't have a Ramadan that day. But you have to keep fasting. You pay it back. Ramadan is a sanctified one. Because you break your fast or you do something wrong, doesn't mean you have the right to eat. No. You have to hold the Ramadan and pay it back. Voluntary eating and drinking. And voluntary vomiting. Don't do that as a Muslim. Anything you know will make you vomit, avoid it. When you vol voluntarily vomit, your Ramadan is gone. You have to keep fasting and you pay it back. When you voluntarily or mistakenly or anytime sleep with your woman or your wife, you as a Muslim, your Ramadan is gone and you have to pay a hefty fine for that. That only. And when you voluntarily masturbate or ejaculate, you as a Muslim, you have to know your Ramadan is gone and you have to pay it back. And when you voluntarily destroy your intention of fasting, don't say that when you're fasting that I don't want to fast today or tomorrow. No, don't say that. Because you make intention every night or in the beginning of the month that you want to fast this month. If you break it, you have, have a problem day. Voluntarily, don't break your intention. Most of us don't do, uh, say that. Even if you want to travel, make sure you're traveling before you break your intention. Otherwise, you have to keep fasting and you pay it back. Because the intention is a shot. It's a condition for your fast to be valid. You have to have intention. And intention is not something you say. You just put it in your mind. These five things don't do it intentionally. Mistakenly, some of, the, some of it, Allah will forgive you. And he knows mistakes. Not every day mistakes. Sometimes you make mistakes. For example, you're sleeping, you dream about a woman, you have your semen out, it's okay, you have no problem. Make host and keep fasting. Your fasting is correct. Because you have no power to stop that. Because you dream about it. If you mistakenly vomit, nothing on you. The prophet said, keep fasting. As long as you don't do it voluntarily, mistaken, Allah will forgive you. Fast. You mistakenly eat and drink. You forgot you fast and you eat. Don't swallow it. If you swallow it, let pass. The other one spit it out and keep fasting. You don't have to pay it. That is the measure what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Some of our scholars say you pay it back, but that is a mazhab. What the Prophet said, keep fasting. If you mistaken, don't say the Shaykh say you can mistake and eat every day. No. Mistaken Allah knows who did a mistake or do it voluntarily. In, in, in voluntarily. So those are major five things will destroy your Ramadan. Things won't destroy Ramadan, but it's not liking for you to do it. Makruha disliked. Playing with the water in your mouth. Especially while you're making wudu. Because some people you say they take a lot of water, they put it in their mouth. When they spit, they spit or just a little bit. You have to be careful in that, brother. It's a ibadah. It's a valuable Ramadan. If you see them, because I watch that, I watch people make them go. They take it a lot of water, put it for, and they start, start, start talking. It will stay there for a few minutes. When they speak, you just a little bit go out. Where the rest of it? That's why the Prophet ﷺ told us, when you're making wudu out of Ramadan, make it harder in. But when you are fasting, don't force it in. When you're making wudu while you're fasting, your nose and your mouth, the water you put in, make it faster out. Don't put it in and start talking or shaking for uh, one minute or ten seconds. Don't do that, brothers. Because you're joking with your Ramadan. Don't do that. And you know your wife is halal for you. 
But in Ramadan, when you fast and avoid playing with her, touching her, or looking at her too much, especially if you're young, it's not haram, but it will lead you to something which is not good. Because we are human beings. So to protect your Ramadan, I don't say, don't say hi. Say hi, salam, it's your wife, it's halal. Your mom, it's halal. But looking at your wife too much, or at these TVs, because right now, we Muslims, we have a big fitna. Our phones. You like it, you don't like it, pictures of naked people is coming out. Our TVs. That's why if you fast and brothers, you have to be careful what you watch. And most Muslims, they make a habit when they don't go to work, they, they, they fast in Ramadan, they spend the half of the day on the computer or before, in front of the TV. Yes, subhanAllah. You don't control what is coming out. And you cannot say Astaghfirullah all the time shaking your heart, head backward. You cannot do that. Sometimes naked people will go through. So watch your Ramadan, brothers. Allah, watch your Ramadan. Because your Ramadan is a spiritual more than physical. Because most of us consider our Ramadan physical. I'm hungry, I'm tired, I'm, you know, icky. I didn't eat for 16 hours. That is not the Ramadan. The Ramadan is your spiritual. How you train yourself to be patient. Patient and to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To elevate you to the status of the angels. Because they don't eat, they don't drink. You elevating yourself to the status of the angels. Higher. That won't be by just stopping eating and drinking. You have to control your eyes. It's just 30 days, brothers. Inshallah, 30 days. Cut out the TV, daytime. Cut out the internet. You have Quran. Alhamdulillah, today we have how many Quran? Any type of voice, any type of nice voice you want, you will get it from the Quran. Make it a Quran, make it a lecture. Help your family to know this is Ramadan. It's the, mo it's the month which Allah asked them to go to a boot camp of Iman. Train themselves, train your limbs to be a true believers as the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam were. I remember when I was growing in a village, we don't have TVs. The whole village have one radio. And that you cannot open it only when the, all the old and elders are asleep at night. Because they always say you're listening to uh, Yahudi and Nasar. Your Ramadan will be pure. Because you have only the masjid and the families. Quran or masjid. Today, even when you pray, your phone will tell you something come up. Look. So we, we have to be careful about our Ramadan because we have a lot of distraction. Now things, we said, it's not allowed in Ramadan. They won't break your Ramadan. Boy, you will lose all your reward. Backbiting, lying, cheating, falsifying things, talking about people, slandering them, saying foul language, looking at haram stuff. All these, you don't have to pay the day, boy, your, your day is zero. You have no reward. Imagine that you fasted 26 hours for 29 days, you have zero. As a Muslim, look at that picture. Look at that picture. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man lam yada qawla zuri you Muslims, if you, one of you are fasting, if you didn't avoid to leave away, stop from lying, cheating, backbiting, falsifying things, doing everything which is wrong with his tongue. Allah doesn't care if he stops eating and drinking. The Prophet said it, not me. Go look at it. Now imagine most of us when we don't fast, we don't even at work or where we don't, we start talking from morning to evening about politics, insulting people, insulting leaders, insult they don't understand what you say. And you, you're wasting your Ramadan. 
Tadi pun Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Fa iza kana yawm sawm ahadikum fala yarfath wa la yaskhab." Fa in sabahu ahad aw shatama aw qatala falyaqul inni sa'im inni sa'im. The Prophet say, "If one of you are fasting, all Muslims brothers and sisters, if one of you are fasting like we fast Ramadan now, he said we shouldn't say foul language." He didn't say don't fight. He said don't say foul language. Bad words. Insulting. Backbiting. Don't. Wala yaskhab. To the point he say, your manners. Check it. Do not yell. The prophet said if you fast him, you shouldn't yell. Starting with your kids. With your wife. When you fast him, change your behavior. That's what the prophet wants. He said, don't yell if you fast him. La yaskhab. He didn't stop there. If someone come and offend you, someone come and insult you, want to fight you, the prophet said, give him only two words. Brother or sister or my wife or my brother, today I'm fasting. I'm fasting. That's what your prophet said you to say. And most of you, we don't do that. We fast and we insult the kid, we yell at them, the people who we work with, we yell at them, we insult them. The prophet said, don't do that. Because you will rip your all reward out and throw it in the trash, and you don't eat 16 hours for nothing. So in Ramadan, the time is short, inshallah. The other weeks, inshallah, the imams will tell you the value of Ramadan, what you should do. But just a four things, I will advise myself and advise you. Focus on them. One of them is reading the Quran. Some of us, some of us don't have the time. Because they work 24 hours at night or 20, 12 hours at night, they sleep all day. Take your Quran. If you don't have the time or the ability to read Quran, take Zikr, remembering Allah. At work, you can say Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah wa alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa Allah akbar. Every second, Good deeds is going up for you. You don't need wudu, you don't need to sit in masjid, you don't need to face qibla. Train your tongue to say subhanallah, alhamdulillah, instead of talking about people, instead of yelling at people, instead of insulting people, instead of talking about politics, say subhanallah, alhamdi, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa ilaha illallah, wa ilaha illallah. If you cannot do that again, be char generous, charitable, every day. Make sure as a Muslim brother or sister, Every day some sadaq will go for you up. Every day in Ramadan. We have a teacher, he said, his teachers used to tell him, when Ramadan come, they will take like 200 or 300 riyals. Every day they will say, okay, five riyals will go up for me. Every day. Intention that every day in Ramadan, sadaq from you to for yourself, for your akhirah in your account. Do that. Every day. Make, give sadaq. If you cannot do that, open your heart and your home, share your food with your fellow Muslim brothers, especially in Ramadan. It's only in Ramadan, only in Ramadan, a human being can get the reward which no human being can get. Imagine when you take your food and you share it with a Muslim fasting brother, 10 of them, 20, 30. The Prophet said, Allah will give you Reward for each person who fasted the reward he gave them without taking out of their reward. For example, say this brother fasted, I fasted. Maybe my fast, Allah will pay me only 100. For his fast, Allah will pay him 1,000. If I feed him, Allah will give me the type he give him, the 1,000, and give me my 100. Only in Ramadan when you feed someone. So help your masjid. The masjid have iftar programs. Don't say you just have to cook food because you don't know if you can finish it. Because most of us, we're wasting food at home. Ramadan is not the month of eating. Wallahi, Ramadan is not the month of wasting food. But we Muslims, we make it a habit. In Ramadan, we cook ten types of food. While we don't eat only one, we eat only one and a half. Ramadan didn't come for that, brothers. So take your food. Take the amount, the amount you buy the food. Take it to the massages. There, many people will come. They don't have someone to cook for them. They don't have someone to give them sahur. 
they will get it from the masjid. You don't know, we know. Some brothers, they don't have someone to cook for them at home. Some of them will go without having suhoor at night. If they come to the masjid, they get food. So you bring your money, give it to the masjid, bring your food, talk to the masjid, help them to help the Muslim brothers and sisters break their fast. And some brothers need help. If you come to the masjid, you ask the imam to help them buy some rice, some oil, some anything. We Muslim, we have to be one community in this Ramadan. That is one of the reasons why Allah gave us Ramadan. So brothers and sisters, it's a reminder for me and you. Be generous in Ramadan. Be kind. Focus on Quran. Focus on Zikr. Focus on Dua. Making Dua. Especially the night prayers. Especially the Taraweeh prayers. When you make your sujood, you can make Dua in your language. Not the Isha, the mandatory prayers, no. But the Taraweeh, if you have any problems, we now Muslims, we ask Allah, but we ask Allah in a way the Prophet didn't do. The Prophet tell us when you want to ask Allah, praise Him first. If you don't know how to do it, read Fatiha. Pray for the Prophet. Then ask Allah what you want. And your language is more faster because there you will be sincere. Most of us want to uh, uh, ask Allah in another language, which someone write for us. Ask Allah in your language, which you will be sincere. Your heart is open to Him. Wallahi will answer your prayer. May Allah answer our prayers. Amen. May Allah correct our fasting. Amen. May Allah give us the right iman and ihtisab, inshallah. May Allah help the um, Islamic ummah. May Allah give us good understanding of this religion. Amen. May Allah heal all the sick in the ummah. Amen. May Allah protect all the fearful and all the oppressed in the ummah. Amen. May Allah help this Islam. Amen. May Allah protect Islam. Amen. May Allah protect Islam. Amen. May Allah protect the Muslims. Amen. May Allah give us good, long life to fast Ramadan and to Amen. give us many, many Ramadans. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar. اللهم وفقنا لصيام رمضان وقيم وقيامه إيمانا واحتسابا اللهم تقبل منا الصيام والقيام وصالح الأعمال يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر اخواننا المستضعفين في جميع انحاء العالم يا رب العالمين اللهم انصرهم على اعدائهم اعدائك يا رب العالمين اللهم اتمهم من جوع وامنهم من خوف يا رب العالمين اللهم ردهم الى اوطانهم سالمين غانمين يا رب العالمين اللهم اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار اللهم انا نسالك الجنه ونعيمها ونعوذ بك من النار وعذابها اللهم أعتق رقابنا ورقاب آبائنا وأمهاتنا من النيران ببركة الرمضان يا رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلاة فريكا متي صلاة فريكا متي صلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رحمكم الله سبحانه وتعالى الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إن 
أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٍ تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالرُّوحُ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرٍ سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر الله سمع الله لمن حمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. Okay, في سبيل الله بنمسك brothers. 
The Prophet was generous, but in Ramadan he was more generous. So you as a Muslim be more generous in Ramadan. So the iftar program in this masjid to help the masjid for one night, you give everyone iftar is 350. 350, 350 dollars to feed the whole masjid for one night. So make that inshallah promise between you and Allah to do it, brothers. It's Ramadan, it's just 30 days. Wallahi, we have the whole year. But the goodness we have this month, no one can mention it. That's what Allah said. The fasting is for him. It's a private, it's a private matter when you fast. So, fi sabir illah for the masjid. Don't say you're tired. Because we don't know about next Ramadan. This Ramadan, Allah give us long life to witness it. So, we should work hard to earn the, to earn the reward and to get the real Ramadan which Allah wants us to fast. Fi sabir illah. So brothers, please, anything you want to question about your Ramadan, ask your shaykh, go to the masjid. Make sure you get the real answer. Don't just go Google and finish. Ask the people who knows well, they tell you the detail. Because everyone has his own private cases. So please, it's a very important worship. Don't do it just because you want to do it. Try to know whatever you need to know in Ramadan. May Allah bless us. Yeah, we have a good idea. You own your money. So I, I pay you a good idea. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.